Okay, today something extraordinary has happened and I just want to show you a couple of quick examples. I'm going to do this for Tana and I'm going to do it related to the work that I have done on the Zettelkasten. I am probably days away from releasing the Zettelkasten template. This couldn't have come at a better time. So I'm going to show how we can use the new Tana AI features to enhance our Zettelkasten in a fairly extraordinary way. To do so, I've come up with two AI enhancements to the Zettelkasten. So this is uh, my Zettelkasten. <clears throat> it is currently filtered down to one note called AI Vector, and you can see all my index term here is the same as the term here, which takes you over to the AI vector term page and will show you the permanent note and all of the relevant notes. We've seen this before. There are several videos. Uh, there's a playlist here on my channel that you can check out to go back and catch up. But what's important about this first demonstration, I'm going to give you the big one first. I've created a way to fill in this definition field using an AI tool. Now, before I click the button, I'm going to show you what the tool does. You'll see here I have a sample of regenerative. In fact, I will change that. So we're only kind of looking here. So now I have a very simple prompt definition here. It's a custom prompt, but it just says define, and I've put dollar sign name with curly braces in quotes succinctly and use cis context as source material. This part here is shocking uh, in a way because what's going to be happening is it's going to use everything that's on this page as the context to generate a prompt to send to OpenAI GPT 3.5 in this case to start. You can see we can use either GPT 3.5 or GPT 3.4, but to start, we're gonna use three because I wanna show you the difference. So what's it doing? It's gonna grab the name and the name is actually here. The name is the name of the node that is the super tag term. And then it's going to fill in this and then it's gonna grab the sys context. This, this is where it gets really wild. So you'll notice that it is grabbing all of the related permanent notes here. This is the expanded prompt. So it's giving us a sample of what's going to be submitted to the AI if I click that button right over there. It's going and it's getting all of the related permanent note and it's getting all the relevant notes. So this is capitalizing on the work that I've previously done to connect my notes. Full pause there because I did work before and I have a lot of references and I have interlinked my notes together. Now I did the work me the human of writing this note because that's the point of a Zettelkast and you don't want the AI writing your permanent notes for you. That will not really be a good uh, use of the technology in my opinion because it's going to pamper too much your own thought processes. You want to work with the AI, not have the AI work, do everything for you because then you don't learn in the same way. You don't build your own connections in your mind. You'll see it's pulling in all the relevant notes and all the permanent notes. Those come from here. What's actually happening? These are search nodes. So these two search nodes, which are dynamic, are being used as context to create a prompt that looks exactly like this that will be submitted to OpenAI. Now, if I wanted to test this, I could click this button and it'll run it down here. So I've clicked test. It's running the request on the sample node here, node to test with. That's exactly doing what it says it will do. And it has now, as you can see, it has created a new definition. Amazing. This is not just the AI. I cannot stress this enough. It has distilled my thinking with these three permanent nodes into a single definition for my term. I'd like to say this works. So I'm going to close this and I'll show you how I just use this in day to day. When I run across one of my terms that doesn't have a definition now, instead of opening all this up and going back and reading all the notes, I can let the AI do some of that for me by just simply clicking this button. And you'll notice there's a little spin spinner going over here and there it is there is the definition again every time you click the button it's going to be a little bit different there are a number of things you can do to change how creative or not the ai gets i prefer it to lean more toward using the source data not making up a bunch of extra stuff now i want to point out this is a gpt gpt 3.5 turbo answer what would it be like if we got GPT-4. I do have access to GPT-4 and I'm going to show you. So if I click this little toggle here, when I click this button, it's going to actually use GPT-4, not GPT-3.5. In this case, that makes a lot of sense because GPT-4 has much larger context window 
in case you do have a lot of relevant notes and permanent notes, you can send them all. Also, because it's just simply better at certain types of reasoning in my experience. I really wanna keep this definition, the 3.5 definition. So let's leave this here so we can compare them. I will now hover here and you'll see it says shift click to append or click to replace is what that really means. So I'm actually gonna shift click the spinner is going to run again, and in a moment, we will see a new definition arrive, but this time again from GPT-4. So it's gotten a bit literal and brought in a lot of formatting. Now this is okay. Um, it just means that I need to refine the prompt. See what it's done is it's act because I've told it to be literal, it's gone in and it's actually pulled in these notes and I, we just don't need them. So I'm just gonna go back and clean this up. Uh, here is the GPT-4 definition. In this case, look, uh, GPT-4 hasn't done much differently uh, than GPT-3.5. Very interesting. Sometimes we get significant significantly better definitions. In this case, no. So I'm okay with that. I'm just gonna go ahead and I'll get rid of this because we don't need it. I'll get rid of this, which I only put here for the purpose of this video. And I'm also going to go back to the prompt workbench and I'm gonna turn that off. So with all that in mind, so in conclusion, we now have a methodology for traversing our Zettelkasten, going into our terms, that we use as the indexes, the index terms, we call those in this model. And we can now quickly, very, very quickly create definitions that are the synthesis of all our prior notes related to that term. This is extraordinary. I just can't tell you enough. Let's do one more. So let's try this one and we'll just give it a click. Perfect. So what it has done again is it has gone through all of my related notes. It has even gone deeper uh, in this case. Super interesting. I have a lot of notes in my system and they're all interconnected. And this is combined context from multiple notes. I'm a little surprised to see some of the things in here. And it's giving us lots of examples that is pulling from the interconnection of my notes. Let's just take a look here at the prompt. This will be an interesting thing to do. So we'll go over here, AI vector, human condition, remove this reference, add this in, and let's see. Once I've actually created a definition, I can make the next prompt self-referential, including that definition. And this is a little bit how tools like Baby AGI and AutoGPT work. But if I run this again, okay, here's what's interesting. Notice the expanded prompt is including the definition because I'm including the full sys context and the definition is part of the sys context of this term now. If I run this again, let, let's try it. What it's gonna do now is it's actually gonna use the definition that it previously generated as part of the context for creating the next definition. This is self-referential and it may refine the definition up to a point. I mean, I couldn't agree more uh, with its reasoning because it's using my reasoning to help generate its reasoning and we're using a low temperature. So it's being fairly consistent with what I've written before. I do think the refined definition is better. Now there's other stuff we can do here as well. If we think it's too long or wordy, I can actually just ask the AI to summarize and it's gonna run on this node here and it's gonna probably write us a shorter version and put it just underneath and then we can evaluate if we like it. But in this case, this is pretty dense, so I don't think we're gonna get much, much more out of that. It is endless. It is endless what you could do at this point.